welcome back. So, we have discussed the eigenvalue pro uh, problem for the Laplacian and we have given the existence of a sequence of eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors form a basis for the L 2 of omega with appropriate normalization. Uh, it also forms a orthonormal basis for H 1 naught of omega and interestingly you have seen that both orthonormal basis uh, gives the same Fourier expansion. The Fourier expansion is same whether you use uh, the normalized one or not. So, both for L 2 and H 1 naught the other normal it is a Fourier expansion is the same. And at the end we also characterized the eigenvalue the first eigenvalue. Now, I am going to quickly recall the eigenvalues of that one. Okay. So, we characterize uh, lambda m. Okay. So, uh, the idea is that once you get one eigenvector for the corresponding to lambda m you just look at its complement uh, orthogonal complement of that one that is the whole idea and then try to minimize there and that is what will happen. So, uh, suppose that is what we will do suppose V is orthogonal to suppose you have developed everything lambda up to m minus 1. So, you look at the V orthogonal to the W 1 etcetera up to W m minus 1 okay, and say m greater than or equal to 2. To do that. So, once you have m equal to 2 you take w 1 orthogonal to that one. So, in that case your v is equal to sigma alpha k w k. So, you see the you do not have to worry it is in L 2 or H 1 it is a same expansion for both that is the advantage you know m equal to m 2 infinity because you are looking at the orthogonal complement of this one. So, you will have to only worry about the only that one you have to see if the remaining things would not come where alpha k as usual is equal to integral of v w k that is enough to take you do not have to. Look. So, uh, so the same analysis I do not want to do it if you want you can work it out same analysis will lead to what we call a lambda m. So, exactly the minimum of R v where v is not equal to 0 and v is orthogonal to this w 1 except w. You do not have to do anything. So, you take on the orthogonality and you have your characterization of lambda m like that. Okay. So, uh, let me take uh, go to the next page. So, you can also get lambda m can also be characterized as in two ways can also be characterized by characterized by as. So, let me do it one by lambda m is equal to by maximizing this one. So, you um, the other one is a minimizing So just look at it the minimization let me uh, show you once again. So, you see this is a minimization all that. So, you can ma maximize about the vectors all the vectors maximum of R v then the you are looking at it v is in the span of w 1 etcetera and at w m it achieves. So, the other characterization is that so, you are look uh, taking a very specific m dimensional subspace and maximizing it. So, what you can do that you can take uh, any subspace and maximize any subspace of dimension m and then maximize and then it is achieved at the this uh, specific subspace of w 1 etcetera w 1 etcetera and then you minimize over all possible w in h 1 naught 
with the dimension of w equal to 1. Okay. So, you can have the all these both characterizations. You would have seen it if you have studied uh, the spectral theory. And to see this one is not very difficult, easy to see. So, just you work it out something easy to see r v less than or equal to lambda m uh, for all v in let me call this is equal to w m ok the span of that uh, for all v in w m and uh, since it is achieved since r v equal to lambda m uh, at v equal to w m okay. we get the gives you the equality ok and the same thing you can do it here and uh, so let me not uh, do that one the same so when you have an uh, arbitrary w uh, and then uh, you can prove that lambda m is uh, uh, less than or equal to that maximum and then it is achieved at that. So, you get all this minimization all that. So, um, so uh, continue this and look at the books exercise I will leave it that. One last thing I wanted to very very important one last property which I want to do it and then I finish this Eigen value problem and little bit special property of special I did not want to spend time on that. So, this is more crucial special property of la the first taken pair the first taken pair Okay. So, I will also leave uh, I will start with the theorem and then in that I will uh, leave some one exercise which you should work out a trivial easy. So, it is not difficult let V is in H 1 naught of omega no that is my theorem. So, let me theorem write it let only, but here let me not let w a non zero vector is in eigen vector is in h 1 naught of omega satisfies r w is equal to lambda 1 uh, then this is something like a converse is an eigen function corresponding to lambda 1. So, you already seen if w 1 is an Eigen function to lambda 1. You already seen if w uh, is an Eigen function then r w equal to lambda 1 what I am saying is that any vector r w. So, side equal to lambda 1 then is an Eigen vector. The proof is easy. So, you start with any v in h 1 naught and let t positive <laughs> let t positive ok. Then w plus t v w is the given one where for which r w is equal to lambda 1 w plus t v is in h 1 naught that is not a problem. Okay. And that hence uh, you know that uh, R w because lambda 1 is minimizer recall that. So, R w plus T v is greater than or equal to lambda 1 because lambda 1 is a minimizer of R v for all v in particular. So, what is your small exercise which I will leave it exercise 
expand the above inequality expand uh, the above inequality and let t tends to 0 do it appropriately t tends to 0 will imply this one it is a direct uh, way of doing it grade w grade v equal to lambda 1 this is what you want to prove it to prove it so that that implies w is an eigenvector is an eigenfunction Okay. So, another result theorem this is very important this is not true very important not true for higher order random values it is also need not be true for other operators even sec other second order operators. The first Eigen value lambda 1 is simple, simple in sense that it has only one independent eigenvector, can have any eigenvector the multiple of that is an eigenvector, but it is not an uh, does not have and w 1 does not change sign, does not change sign. Uh, thus, because it does not change sign, thus we can choose w 1 such that this is important it does not vanish also by maximum principle. So, we will see w 1 greater than 0 in omega or w 1 less than 0 in omega you can check. Of course, you assume assume omega is connect assume omega connect so try to give me uh, let me give a proof of this again proof this is the last proof of this uh, elliptic equation theory let w be uh, again uh, any eigen function for lambda 1 ok. So, w is equal to, uh, is in h 1 naught of omega keep that in mind that we have seen this property then its positive and negative parts w p w minus is in. So, these are all we are using h 1 naught of omega ok. So, this property we will see. So, therefore, you can take v equal to w plus as a test function test function into that weak formulation 2 is the weak formulation and that will give you integral of you can take w minus also. So, w plus uh, is equal to lambda 1 integral w w plus. So, essentially w plus and w minus have disjoint supports. So, this will imply integral over omega grade w plus uh, w plus is equal to lambda 1 w plus w plus. Similarly, gradient of w minus gradient of w minus is equal to lambda 1 w minus w minus ok. So, you have that. If
W does not have a constant sign. You want to prove that first I am proving that does not have a constant sign. What does that imply? That imply uh, W plus not identically 0 both W minus not identically 0 of course they have disjoint support but both of them should be. So, that will immediately implies your R W plus R W plus equal to lambda 1 that is also equal to R W minus means uh, you already get from this inequality and that implies by our previous theorem what is the previous theorem tells you whenever some function is in whenever there is a function which is it is in h 1 naught it achieves lambda 1 that is an Eigen function which is a contradiction basically that implies uh, both w plus and w minus are Eigen functions for lambda 1 functions for lambda 1 ok. So, that means minus plus is equal to lambda 1 w plus minus Laplace n of w minus is equal to lambda 1 w minus ok. So, now you apply your maximum principle strong maximum principle and uh, uh, because this is greater than or equal to 0 w plus this is greater than or equal to 0 this is greater than or equal to 0 implies w plus is greater than and both w minus greater than 0 both are greater than 0 in omega and uh, uh, that is not possible which is the contradiction. Okay. That is a contradiction. So, the first uh, one part is proved that uh, uh, w has uh, that implies w uh, has a constant sign uh, as a constant sign and choose once you have a choose and it is uh, by maximum principle you can choose choose uh, w 1 such that w 1 is positive you can choose w 1 is negative as well. Now, to the prove that it is uh, to prove trivial now lambda 1 is symbol let w w tilde be 2 Eigen functions be 2 Eigen functions. of course, independent ok to orthogonal to uh, we write it orthogonal or even orthonormal you can take it orthogonal Eigen functions for lambda 1 such that. So, uh, therefore, you get it orthogonal right that is you, that is you get integral of w 1. Uh, w 1 tilde uh, by w 1 w 1 yeah oh I do not need that w 1 is not needed why did I write that w w tilde is equal to 0, uh, but this is not possible. So, w tilde you can choose that to be positive this to be positive and but this is not possible 
but uh, this is not possible okay okay so as a final remark the result presented above the pre result presented so far presented it holds for that uh, general operator not everything elliptic operator du by dx yeah, du by dx plus a naught u v equal to lambda of course a naught is greater than or equal to 0 smooth all these assumptions will have that ok. And uh, you have the similar va variation formulation you have the Rayleigh equation thing everything. So, more or less uh, uh, I have uh, done this part of the course, uh, but uh, in the la next maybe uh, no, very quickly uh, in 5 minutes uh, I cannot spend much time because as we are not expecting to do this. Uh, probably this uh, 5 minutes or 10 minutes are for numerical analysts. What is called Galerkin approach? Galerkin. Uh, what I am going to tell is that <coughs> general principle of Galerkin, general principle, Galerkin, general. Principle. Galarkin method. Galarkin method is not only used to approximate thing, Galarkin method can be used to, to prove existence as well. Yeah, that is also a, uh, people do use it not only for elliptic problems, even for other problems you use it. So, what is the idea? So, you have a problem A U V is equal to f v for all v in v and then uh, you are looking for a u in u v looking so the basic idea is that uh, approx so you choose an orthonormal basis e n orthonormal basis for v and then you consider this finite dimensional thing v m equal to span of e 1 etcetera e 1 etcetera e m and then formulate this problem 1 in this finite dimensional space a u m v equal to f v for all v in v m and you look for u m in v m. The one of the important thing you will say that in finite dimensional spaces all norms are equivalent <coughs> or uh, spaces all norms are equivalent and you can work with basically L 2 norm that is the whole thing ok. So, what are the first step ok to we already done prove that is trivial that is what I am saying once you have an ellipticity prove the existence these are the steps you prove existence of u m may boundedness then you take weakly convergent subsequences weakly convergent subsequence and show that along the same let us denote uh, the convergence to u show that u is a solution. So, that is not the main idea. 
solution and prove uniqueness for the main problem prove uniqueness that you may have to do it uniqueness for one. So, even if you are the uh, thing and that, that implies every uh, the uh, whole sequence converges if you get all that whole sequence converges once you do this one. So, what is uh, general how, how do you do this one for the getting the sequence here. So, it is a finite dimensional problem. So, you can represent the um because it is a finite dimensional you can identify v m basically with your r m. In other words you write your u m as a m j e j j equal to 1 to m and for arbitrary v in v m can also be represented as v is equal to sigma uh, b j e j and the same j's are in a m j are in real numbers. So, it is a vector for each m it is a vector in r m. So, a similar thing b 1 here. So, you will have uh, v is in uh, in this space here ok. This is equivalent to same as you are looking for your b arbitrarily right b 1 etcetera. So, what are your unknowns? Unknowns unknowns are nothing but a m j ok a m 1 etcetera a m 1 that is what you are unknown ok. And then you can write your uh, f also uh, you can write your uh, equation eventually you can write your 2 the equation eventually can be written as a u m I represent u uh, m in this form also ok. So, you can uh, I do not change the notation. So, you represent u m also for this one the same if you do not like you can use some other u m. So, basically you get your a u m equal to some f bar f bar is the vector coming from f e j ok. So, f bar uh, uh, f also can be written as summation f e j this is what you do it for everything and this is call it f 1 and then you have your f bar is equal to maybe you have to write in the column form ok that is all you have to do it and maybe you write u m also in the column form ok u m also you write it basically uh, the corresponding component which you are doing a m 1 etcetera a m so that. So, you will have your equation of this finite dimensional equation a is equal to the matrix a of e i each you see m by m matrix and by ellipticity of small a prove positive definiteness of A. You can see that positive definiteness of A ok. So, that way you derive and then you follow the procedure and probably we will give an example through our class test ok. And there is another one which probably I will do it what is about the error analysis that is the one thing. So, there is what is called it you are basically you try to do what you call an interpolation error the first step in is all these thing interpolation error. That means, basically error between the spaces error between v and v h v f ok. So, using the error analysis 
you will be a interpolation error and one of the theorem which you have studied in our subloft spaces etcetera we have discussed something about the interpolation error that comes in handy to do this one. But the major step major problem of course, this error analysis is indeed a problem, but major problem is the choice of your basis choice of basis how do you choose the basis. So, there are interesting methods developed for the last several decades uh, called mini methods among them the earliest and interesting methods are finite uh, difference method. This is more suitable is not finite difference finest difference is probably developed even much before, but then the one of the very prominent method is the finite element method. You discretize the domain using the discretizing the domain you try to construct finite dimensional basis which is of elements for h 1 naught of omega and then you construct your V m. So, there will be a uh, decompose and discretization of your domain you discretize the domain and then you produce fi interesting finite dimensional spaces and uh, that is a deep uh, big industry itself and then deriving it. There is much more and uh, non conforming methods where you do not the spaces finite dimension spaces will not retain the h 1 space discontinuous methods etcetera. So, I will more or less stop here uh, these elliptic equations. Uh, now, uh, from here we will move on to study the evolution equations. So, what I think that you should go through the material which are which is the bare minimum. So, we have done very very little a bare minimum method. So, whatever direction you want to take in the study of PDE whether it is an elliptic equation, equilibrium system, nonlinear equation, specific equations like conservation laws or a uh, fluid flow equations any equations where you want to study in the modern setup uh, you should go through what you have done. So, this is only the beginning of the, the tip of the iceberg. Okay, the ice you have to do it. So, I will stop here with this all elliptic equation we will study more about evolution equations in the coming next 20 lectures. Thank you, thank you.